Прогнозируй, прогнозируй, прогнозируй. Hey, finally, I'm going to do a review of the Ferrofish B4000 Plus. Um, I had to lay down some tracks this weekend, actually a track or two, using an organ sound. And since I had to get this out and work it for that, I thought perfect time to go ahead and do the review. I will try and keep this to about 10 minutes, including this monologue. And basically I want to go over some of the functionality of the screen, uh, see how the interface, the operating system works. Look at the little teeny LED screen that's extremely nice when you can see it. And some of the pluses and minuses that I've discovered while I'm using it. And uh, play you some of the sounds so you get a feel for how the controls work and how they affect the sound and stuff. So I will be using a Roland FA06 to control it. None of the sounds will be coming, coming from the Roland. It will strictly be coming from the Ferrofish B4000 Plus. So sit back and enjoy. Oh, and this is a Murphy's Red in a Guinness glass. That's allowable, I think. Okay, uh, the interesting thing about the Ferrofish is it is very good for laying out your splits. You can have a upper manual, a lower manual, and pedals. It actually has two MIDI inputs. I guess the second one's for pedals, since usually they're not always connected to the main manuals. Um, you can set it up in splits through your controlling keyboard or through the uh, actual ferrofish itself. So anyway, you can control the different parameters for the different manuals, the upper, lower, the pedal. You can actually go in and change. Okay, you can actually go in and change the draw bar settings, draw bar settings for each of the, the different manuals, the levels, the pedal, the lower, the upper. If you take all the draw bars off, you, you still have the per percussion click. Rotary effect can be controlled by a pedal, does not have to be a latching pedal. You can also control the lower register. Now, of course, the unfortunate part is if you're changing the settings for run one register, um, these don't manually switch back to what they were for the other register. But the display does show the little LED, LED display, which you can't see, unfortunately, does show what the settings are supposed to be. Right now, that's the lower manual. And you can control the, the click, the key click, the crunch, the drive. Uh, there's a setting called condition, which deals with, uh, I guess, the aging quality of a Hammond B3, leakage, tuning, uh, those are all the parameters under just the sound. Now it's interesting to note the way the menu works is each of these sound 
percussion, tone, rotor, horn, bass. Each of these, if you select sound here with this button, each of these knobs up here controls the item that goes across from sound. This knob, if you, if you choose sound here, this knob controls the click of the sound, this knob controls the crunch of the sound, and it's listed. There's a nice little table uh, I think um, Waldorf has kind of a similar menu system for their synths. Another German company, by the way, Furrowfish is a German company, and uh, that works fairly well if you're just if you have the time to go through it and play with it. Uh, on stage, with dorking around in practice, I've noticed that it's not so always it's not always so easy to work with. Um, but it's, it's effective, it gets you most of the parameters you want, and it has some awesome kind of uh, sounds for it. Uh, real quick, it does still have a pedal register, so if you want to... Sculpt your pedal tones too. Up to the two foot. partial and uh, I admit I'm mostly a single hand player on the keyboard so for me it's not so critical using the bass pedal okay let's go through some of the settings again sound has let's go ahead and turn down the distortion to drive Click setting. Don't know if you can hear it. Crunch. That's different from the drive. That's kind of a lower the high end's rolled off on that. Then you have the normal drive effect. Which can get pr fairly uh, deep purplish. Doesn't sound bad at all. Um, condition, again, I'll have to go into manual for that. Uh, leakage, tuning, these are all options in the first one. Percussion, that is a very good one. We'll give you a demo on that. This does show you the, uh, let's turn the drive off first. Go to percussion. This lets you control um, whether it's on or off. level, the harmonic, the attack, the decay, Now if you take all the draw bars down, you can hear just the percussion playing. So you can change the attack. Again, the decay. The harmonic of the percussion. Anyway, awesome, lots of control. Uh, I've been incredibly pleased with it. Again, I'm no Hammond B3 expert, but uh, um, for me and what I'm doing, kind of playing with a classic late 60s, early 70s rock 
cover band. It's been extremely good. Um, no complaints. Presets are, that's sometimes a problem. The way you play presets is you hit this little button right here and then you fiddle with this little knob and let me tell you when you're playing and you're trying to look down and read the little text on here to figure out which setting or song it's on or which patch it's kind of problematic. I admit I have like two or three that I use and then the rest I kind of just sculpt on the fly. Um, but uh, a little frustrating in ways uh, to use live and, and know exactly where you're going. Last point, it does freeze up occasionally. I've had it freeze up on me at least twice where I had to repower down and power back up. Not sure what the cause was. It maybe you got some bad MIDI commands from the master keyboard or the control keyboard or what the situation was. Um, the thing's built extremely solid. This is all metal, uh, metal underneath here. The draw bars all have little click detents in them. It's, uh, you can hear that. Very nice to work with. Um, the back, again, has two MIDI ends, a MIDI A, MIDI B. It's got USB. Uh, I don't know if the USB is for anything other than operating or updating the operating system. It has a pedal input, I assume for volume control and whatever other parameters. It has the switch, it has an audio in, so you can actually run something into it and through the effects. And the effects have compression, chorus, some reverb, um, all fairly decent. I mean, you can hear the reverb there. Decent enough quality. And uh, headphones. The audio out is actually a stereo tip ring sleeve, quarter inch jack. So if you want to do stereo, you don't have a left and a right. You have to have a, uh, again, a tip ring sleeve split Y cable. And other than that, it has been extremely nice. I really enjoyed it uh, for the price compared to my Nord Electro 2, which I paid well over a thousand dollars for. This thing was I think around 500, half the price. Granted this doesn't have electric pianos and pianos and clavs and a couple other things, but the uh, I, I think the B3 modeling is much more effective, much more on target than the uh, the Electro 2. Of course that being said, Nord has, has, Nord has released the Electro 3 and Electro 4, so maybe they're doing a lot better and I just don't know because I haven't played with those. Again, all in all, I've talked about some of the positives, some of the negatives. Uh, that little screen is a fabulous uh, summary of information. It's just hard to read at times. The buttons allow a lot of control, but they're kind of small and kind of particular to work with, especially in sort of a live setting, as well as selecting presets um, that can be problematic if you're kind of frantic going from song to song. But I think it's worth the price. Uh, they did a really awesome job. You get a lot of parameter control there. Uh, again, I'm not the best person to say this is a fabulous clone wheel emulation of a B4 or B3, but uh, I'm digging it, especially for the price. Cheers.